Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, live from Harlem, it's the Ramble with Alex, that's me, Alex Bennett, and we're here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, he's all the way out there in San Francisco, California, my hometown, I'm jealous, it's Larry Bubbles Brown, hello Lawrence. Uh, happy New Year, and uh, I'm sure it will be a crappy one. You're sure it'll be a crappy one? Even people I know that are optimistic are horrified about the next year. So. About the next year and what it brings, yeah. Well, yes, yes. They're probably afraid of Trump, is what it is, you know, and that possibility. Well, he's, I think he's looking good in the polls. Or... Yeah, he's looking good in the polls now. You never know. I mean, I just can't believe that anybody would vote for a guy who has this many charges against him, you know? <laughs> it, it seems to help him. <laughs> In fact, I, I strongly suggest that if he really wants to get elected president of the United States, he kills somebody and get charged with murder. <laughs> it's just amazing, isn't I, it? Well, <laughs> It's all part of our dystop, dystopic, dystopian. Dystopian, yeah. Or dystopic. Yes, dystopic, uh, I think, would work, too. Yeah. yeah. But I think you, I saw an interview I got with, with Nixon. Uh, it was just, just the people back then just seemed so much better than what we've got now. Well, I, what I've said is, you know, uh, 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 you didn't like Bush, but compared to him, compared to Trump, He's not so bad. In fact, n neither is uh, neither is Obama, and uh, neither is uh, Clinton, and for that matter, neither is uh, well. Nixon isn't looking that bad now either, is he? You know, you we're yearning for uh, Gerald Ford. That's how bad it is. <laughs> we're yearning for Gerald Ford. Oh man! So, how was your New Year, uh, Bubs? No, there he goes. We got hung up on here. Let me uh, let me call him back. Uh, we're having all kinds of troubles today. But this one, yeah, there we go. It rings again. Yeah. Okay, we got cut off. Yeah, yeah. No, well, you were talking about your service not being that good there. Yeah. Uh, it sounds great, you know. Okay. But that was, right. that was a dropped call. Let's see how many dropped calls Skype can do in this particular uh, episode. Anyway, I was wondering uh, how your new year went. Did you work? I did. I did a, a gig way out in uh, Brentwood, which is like past Concord, and it was actually not bad. Is a place named Brentwood? There's two Brentwoods in California, one where O.J. had an incident. And, yeah, um, yeah. And the one up here. Really? You know, there are towns. Yeah. You, does this happen to you that you hear about a town in California and you never heard of it? Um, yeah, because there's so many of them. I didn't know there was a Brentwood in Northern California. Oh, yeah. 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 And they have a comedy club there, do they? Or what was the case? They have a restaurant. They've been doing comedy there for like 20 years. So they've had a good run. Yeah. And so they do a, a New Year's Eve show, and were you the headliner? Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't want to take it, but New Year's is not, uh, it's a kind of an amateur night, and uh, from what I've heard, people are not going out like they used to on New Year's, and the, uh, the clubs here are not booking, they used to book fairly big names, and that's not happening anymore. Yeah, so who, who was the headliner? Uh, a guy named Michael Pace. Very funny guy. Is he good? Is he new? New guy? Yeah, he's good, but he's he's been around as long as I have, and he's pretty like me. He's pretty much. I think he's pretty much done. He's doing cruise ships, which he said is uh, horrible. Yeah, 
Well, I, uh, yeah, I, 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 cruise ships are something I've been looking into because Marjorie and I have been looking at um, how to spend our waning years here. And we decide we're going to do a lot of travel. And we look at these boats, and I don't want to get on any of them. You know, because it's oh, like, hi. well, I'm sorry, but I just don't think I want to get on a uh, uh, ocean liner that has a Ferris wheel, you know, or, <laughs> or, or has an ice rink. I mean, I, I looked at some, I looked at one Norwegian, and they said what they have on the boat, and it's things like, you know, bat, there's a basketball court, okay? You know, and I'm going, a pool. I didn't. I didn't go on this trip to get back to the life I could have had back home. I want something new and exciting, and and all this crap about. And then they have theater. You know, I don't want to see Oklahoma. Are you kidding me? You know, they do theater and they do this and they do that. And you can go, what, what? What do I need that for? You know, it's everything. Everything you have on land, so <laughs> I need it. Yeah, and then you're crowded in there with how many people? You know, I think in a couple of thousand, e e e easily, easily try five thousand on some of them, maybe more. Oh, that, that's you know? a small city. So. Yeah, that is a small city. So you know, I mean, I, so what would I do if there were that many people? I'd probably stay in my stateroom and never come out. So what? What, mm -hmm. what kind of vacation did I have? So we yeah, I never saw the appeal of those things myself. So. Yeah, I don't get it either. So, you know, um, screw it. Uh, but, uh, you know, so I imagine that if you had to work one, I mean, you're stuck on those things for how long if you're going to work one of those places? Uh, they, to most guys that do, they tell me you're on there for a week. Sometimes you only do three shows, but um, so you got a lot of time to kill. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, come on. it's uh, It doesn't make a lot of sense. Boy, my computer is coming up saying they want my email or phone number. Okay. All right. I go, uh, hold on a second. I get, you see, this is what I got to deal with. Uh, let's see here. Now. I'm not going to tell you my number, folks. Uh, <laughs> okay. And then I sign in, and it's... Mm-hmm. 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 And there's my password. Do not give your password out to anybody. Ever. Okay? Unless uh, unless it's something like that where you got to sign in to something. Because uh, Marjorie has done a couple of things where she just gives them their, her number and doesn't look to see if it's like spam or whatever. So... But wow. you're probably going to be getting a lot of that now because now you're hooked up full time to the internet, right? Uh, no, I'm. Uh, I, I think I sent you an email last night that I've got off my uh, my high speed. What did what, what, you do? Go back to dial up? I'm going back to dial up. Yeah, I had a I had a trial run and I was done with it. So. Well, you never used okay. it. Yeah, I did. I looked at some videos and stuff, and I got. I realized uh, then I'd be on the thing for hours looking at YouTube, and I didn't want to do that. So we're never going to do Zoom with you then? It doesn't look like it, no. So you gave it up? I gave it up. God, uh, it you, should, trial period. you should get the Luddite of the Year Award for crying out. I know. <laughs> Jeez almighty, Larry. <laughs> Anyway, we'll get back to that. We'll circle back to this in a moment. Uh, but no, so so uh, you were playing uh, up at this club, and the guy said that he only when he went on a cruise, he only had to do like three shows, and that's fine. Yeah, but, but when three shows for a week, yeah, yeah. But when you're not doing the shows, you're stuck on the goddamn boat. Yeah, and if they don't like you, everyone knows you. So. <laughs> You can't escape. You walk down the hallways or whatever, and people are saying, <laughs> yeah. not really good last night, man. You bombed. <laughs> you know, it's like be, when, you do horrible. Show, when you do a show, let's say it's the worst show you've ever done. You get off stage. You figure, figure that's one for the books. You get in your car, and you go home. 
being on a ship is like doing your act, having it be the worst time show you've ever done, and then have everybody come home with you. Yeah, exactly. So that's what it's like. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, amazing. That's amazing. I did a show a couple of years ago in Santa Rosa. It was so bad. I literally said, good night. I was parked really close on the street to the club. I walked off the stage, out the door, got in the car. I was gone before the guy, the MC, said good night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's what happens. I can't imagine you bombing very often at this point uh, in your life. I've bombed so many times, I'm numb. Well, no, but I'm saying that, that you have... You've done this so many times that don't you have baked into your act a certain things you can do that you know are winners that never uh, lose? I tried, but nothing was working that night. So. You, you, folks, you can tell when a comic is bombing, when all of a sudden he goes from one joke subject to another joke subject. Mm. You know, yeah. And after a while, he's just doing every piece of material that he ever thought worked before, but it's not working now. Yeah, it's the worst feeling in the world. So. But I'm saying that, you, you know, you are, uh, you know, you've been doing this for so long, you shouldn't have that problem, okay? No, I shouldn't, I should be, but that's why I think I'm a mediocre comic, so. Well, no, but you're not a mediocre comic. I'm gonna tell you something, I was just, we ju just watched, we sat here watching one of the worst comedy specials I've seen in many a year. When I tell you who it is, you're going to be shocked. Dave Chappelle. Really? This is like his latest uh, comedy special on Netflix. And he just... This is an hour? He just wasn't funny. You know, he was fun, okay, and uh, one of the things he does, or he was doing in this special, that I can't stand when a comic does it, is he tells a joke and then laughs at it. Oh, really? Yeah, you you know what annoying. I'm talking about? You know comics who do this, right? I've they, seen comics do that, yeah. Tell a joke, and then they laugh at it, and that's the cue to the audience to laugh. That's the cue to the audience, it's, it's yeah. Funny. It's, a, it's and annoying. Then, and, then, and then they laugh, okay? But it's a false way of getting a laugh. The best way of getting a laugh is say something funny. Well, he wasn't saying much that was funny in this special. What I said to Marjorie was, you're seeing the end of Dave Chappelle's career. He's run out of material. You know, and um, uh, it, it really uh, was, a, I, I couldn't help but think of you, for instance. You do your act, you, get, you have to go up and get genuine laughs. You know, Chappelle, all he has to do is show up as Dave Chappelle. So he has no idea what's really funny and what isn't funny because they'll laugh at him saying anything just because right. he's Dave Chappelle and they probably paid a hundred bucks to come see you. Larry B B Bubbles Brown, when he gets on stage, has to get on stage to an audience who maybe never heard of Larry Bubbles Brown and you've got to make them laugh. And when you make them laugh, you're truly funny. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, I used to say that, remember we used to do those shows, you know, at the Great American Music Hall and places like that. And I used to go up and do five minutes. And everybody say, boy, you, you really killed with that five minutes. I said, yeah, but if I tried to do this in Reno, Nevada, nobody would laugh. Everybody's <laughs> laughing because it's me, Alex Bennett. They're laughing they at know Alex you, Bennett. Yes. They're laughing at the character I've created. But when I go to Reno, they wouldn't know that character at all. I mean, anywhere out of the outside of the signal of our radio station, they wouldn't get what I was doing. But I, I could make people laugh because, uh, you know, so I, I got laughs dishonestly, okay? You get them for real. When you get a laugh, it's because they found you funny, uh, and not because you're Larry Bubbles Brown. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Yeah. How do you feel better about it, yourself? A little better. <laughs> and what, what you were saying about uh, he could be out of material, I think there's a big thing now, like comics like Louis C.K. and that, and they try to write a new hour every year. 
And Steve Martin said the greatest comic has maybe two, two and a half hours of material. Then they're just hitting the same notes over and over again. So yeah, I don't think people, I don't think people have that much material. Well, that's why Steve Martin got out of stand up. He said I had, exactly. done, I had done three turnarounds on the act, and I felt I had said everything I ever had to say, and now it was on to the rest of my career. You know, so I mean, and you remember him as a stand-up comic. The man was a sensation. I saw him perform out of the Nassau Coliseum in front of maybe fifteen, twenty thousand people. Yeah, he was like. Uh the first comic that hit as big as a, uh, a rock band. Yeah, yeah. He he was like a sensation. Yeah. So, like 70, 77. He was so huge. Yeah. And he also said that it got to a point where he could just do certain things and it would make them laugh because it was playing your greatest hits. Like he go, well, excuse me, you know, and then everybody would laugh. But there was nothing funny about, well, excuse me. What was funny was they were them relating to him in another piece on Saturday Night Live that he did where that was the punchline, you know? Mm -hmm. So he felt that it was just too easy to get a laugh. I mean, it had gotten to the point where it wasn't any fun being a stand-up anymore. But you've never gotten Yeah, I wonder how. Yeah, what? No, I wonder how far he could have ridden that. So. I think he couldn't have ridden it much longer. You know, and I think he knew that too, that he had to make that jump into movies and a very smart career. Okay? Yeah, very well smart. well run career for sure. Well, I mean, he wasn't a stupid man. He knew what the realities were. He was this absolute sensation that was filling, you know, thirty thousand seat uh, auditoriums and uh and, and getting paid lots of money. But that, you know, he had to leave that behind. He had to go to something new. And that was movies. And he did very well in movies, you know. And uh, to this day, I think he's very good at what he does, you know. So, which is banjo playing. Uh, <laughs> that would be disappointing to go see Steve Martin and get the banjo, then. Well, you, oh, you're going to get the banjo. There's no question about it, you're going to get the banjo. But he happens to be a pretty good banjo player. Although the banjo is That's one of the, I've heard, yeah. the banjo is one of the easiest instruments to play. My father really? and my okay. father, I was always amazed by him because he chose to play the hardest instrument they say there is to play. And that's the violin. You Someone know. told me that last night actually. So it's a because I said, God, it must be great to play an instrument. I said, what's the easiest and what's the hardest? And the, the violin's easy, the hardest. The easiest, supposedly, is the banjo. You know, so. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. But um, I thought drums would be, but then someone said drums are actually kind of hard. Well, if to play drums well, to just go clunk, 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 I guess is easy. But to play them well and to come up with rhythms that nobody else has come up with, you know, it's very difficult. But, so I always was amazed by my father because he didn't start playing the violin till he was like 19 and he learned it well enough to read music and everything else, you know, uh, and did very, it had a nice career as a musician. But then, you know, I always, often like to tell the story that what happened to my father's career as a violinist was that when they got rid of orchestras, they went to bands. You know what the difference between a band and an orchestra is? No. Strings. No strings? <laughs> no strings. A band has no strings. A uh, 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 orchestra has strings. Like when, um, um, what's his name on the Letterman show used to call it, Paul Schaefer and the CBS Orchestra. It really bothered me because it's not an orchestra, you know? Uh, I, I, and I hate to see us bastardizing terms, but that's just me. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. Well, it just seems like people like uh, music much more than they like talking. So it'd be, uh, <laughs> I mean, being a musician would be much more fun than being a comedian. Yeah. So was your your New Year pretty good then? I mean, was did they did you go over all right and so on? 
Yeah, I only had to do 20 minutes, so I did 20, and I said good night, and I drove home. Didn't even see the closing it, act, huh? No, I did not. I didn't want to be there for that. I hate the New Year's thing. Did they well, ha- we used to do a New Year's show at the Palace Fine Arts for the year, remember? Yeah, yeah. But then I always had a little party afterwards and things like that, you know. Yeah. The crowds that came out uh, for those shows were pretty good. But a lot of New Year's show, they're just people that come out once a year and they're not really comedy fans and some of the shows it could be pretty bad yeah well but uh, we, we we also used to have pretty good uh, p- people on the show so there's a reason for you to stay around just to hang out with them you know yeah yeah so we had like a Dave Attell and uh, yeah, yeah. he had a good lineup there do we ever have Louis CK I don't think so no. I don't think so no um, but uh, Dave Attell uh we used him, especially on one show that I remember. And uh, what I remember about him was he, he sat out in the hallway all by himself. Smoking. <laughs> smoking and sulking before he went on. And then he went on, and, you know, I'm, I figured I'm paying this guy. I hope he can perform tonight. He just doesn't look happy, you know. And then he went on and yeah. <laughs> did this incredible act, you know. And, uh, uh-huh. you know, like he would be on one. Of, if I had an ideal show, I'd put him on, you know, as an act. Uh, yeah, I think he's I think he's still considered probably the best club comic in America right now. Isn't Louis C.K. who had nothing but trouble, OK, in you know, with this whole Me Too thing and everything like that, you know, um, I heard that he's doing as well as he's ever done on the road. That's what I've heard, yeah. He's just killing on the road. You know, it's just that he can't do his TV shows and things like that. He had like five shows on the air at one time. You know. He had so much going on now. Then uh, I think he won a Grammy last year for his comedy record. Mm-hmm. So it hasn't Sorry, hurt his stand-up for... career. But what it hurt was the, the peop- these people who own TV networks and so on go... Well, we can't have him on. Uh, he, he he's 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 a, a, a you know lightning torch or whatever. You know he's bad a bad deal because he well, pulled, do they ever forgive him or not for pulling out his penis? They should have yeah. forgiven him the minute he did it. You know, I mean, uh, would you pull your penis out in front of three women? No, would I? No, there's a. <laughs> No, so there was something in his character that made him feel he could do it, okay? And not that he had any real license to do it. He was These women were only there because they were comedians as well, and they were trying to talk to him about comedy and things like that and pick his brain and so on. And then at one point he said, listen, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to pull my penis out of my pants here. And no, none of them, none of them said, no, don't. Okay, or, or none of well, them. They probably went, didn't think they probably didn't think he was really going to do well, it. Well, then right? then he pulled it out, and none of them left. You know, so I mean, what damage was done there? He gave them full warning, <laughs> and that was enough to ruin his entire career. Are you kidding me? But it's these TV people, there's oh, we can't have him on here. He'll give us a bad reputation. Yeah, like every television executive pulls his penis out of his pant. Well, maybe they do. Uh, now that I think about it, but, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they just—it's it's, it's amazing business. And I, I just felt—I really felt sorry for Louis C.K. You know, I felt he—he—he well, he, he didn't deserve that. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm glad he's come back. And the women had a good story. They go, guess what I saw last night? <laughs> Louis C.K.'s dick. Oh, how big was it? Well, it's not that big, but it looked like <laughs> it could do the job. You know, um, I mean, it's like um, Frank Sinatra used to come on to women all the time. And none of them ever got upset because they just went on and told their friends, guess who came on to me the other day? Frank Sinatra. You know, so it, yeah, that's a good story. All I'm saying is that you know, I I just felt I just felt so bad for him. You know, 
I feel bad for a lot of these guys. But anyway, we can talk about that maybe next time because we're running, okay. we're running out of time here. We've got about a minute. So anyway, yeah. so we finally found out that Larry Bubbles Brown spent his New Year's Eve working and then getting in his car and going home. And when you got home, did you do anything? Did you have yourself a glass of champagne? No. You know. No. I never. I never. Celebrating New Year's was not one of my favorite. Things. Not mine either. Not mine either. Amateur night. Amateur night. That's what we call For it. For sure. Yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's Larry Bubbles Brown. You know what he is? He's a comedian. He's very funny. If he's ever playing anywhere near you, uh, lock up your daughters. Okay. Uh, thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, there you go, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thank you, Larry, and we'll uh, see you next week. Uh, hello, everybody. This is uh, Friday. Jay, I get through with this today, and then I can just sleep for the whole weekend. I've been so tired today. I don't know what it is. Boy, I'm just, I just, I, I, I turn on the TV set, and we start watching like a movie. We're watching this very funny cartoon. I don't know if you've ever seen it. If you haven't, try and search it out. It's on Netflix right now. It's available. It's called Sausage Party. And it's an animated film, and it is the dirtiest animated film you will ever see. Okay? We watch that. But as it's on, I'm going to sleep. I'm nodding off. You know? Can't figure out why I'm nodding off. I'm just nodding off. And uh, uh, then I uh, we're through with that. And then I go into the other room and go watch some other stuff. And I start nodding off again. I can't keep from sleeping today. So if I nod off during this show, I, I've decided it has something to do with watching television. There's something with my eyesight or something that's uh, causing it to, to be a problem. Anyway, let me bring in there a whole bunch of people waiting. Oh, boy. we got a whole ton of people just uh, waiting to get on right now. Uh, and uh, uh, they're all the same people that we have most of the other times, but a few that we haven't seen in a while, for instance. Uh, Jason, for instance, is here. Wave, Jason, so they can see you. So I'm not showing up as owner? No, you're not showing up as owner. You're showing up as Jason. And uh, Jeff's here, and uh, Josh is here, and Charlie is here, and Vernon. Hello, Vernon. And uh, Brian Neary is here as well. Hello to all of you. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. What'd you do on, Josh? What did you do on New Year's? Because we haven't talked to you since New Year's. Uh, didn't really do anything, actually. Yeah. How many people here actually did something on New <laughs> Year? Raise your hand. Well, you did, Brian. Where did you go? Uh, went to uh, a party. Went to a party. Went to a party. <laughs> yes. Do you ever went find the garden party, huh? Do you ever find the New Year's parties, though, are any fun? Yeah, you know, my friend was there, and then we just started saying a bunch of rookies because, yeah, yeah, too many drunk people. Oh, too many? Were they? Were you drunk, too? Not at that time. What do you mean, not at that time? <laughs> <laughs> that was later. Uh, that was later, huh? Okay. No, no, I was good. I, I didn't drink that much. Mm. Just buzzed. <laughs> hey, there's Kevin. Kevin's just joined us. Boy, nice, nice bunch of people tonight. Well, you can start talking. I'm going to go to sleep. Mm. Uh, Wake up. Yeah. I, and you went to a party, right, too, Jeff? Yeah. Uh, no, Pam and I had a, a party between us. Oh, oh really? <laughs> no. Okay, no details, please. <laughs> no details. <laughs> Did you have your browser on at that time? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was for his OnlyFans page. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so uh, uh, and yeah, Marjorie and I, I, I talked about this the other night. Marjorie and I just stayed home. You know, then I did that show that we that we did here. Um, so 
you know, at least it, it uh, gives me a chance to, to work on New Year's. I was going to try to call in, but I would have gotten in trouble with the wife. Why <laughs> Why would you get in trouble with the wife? <laughs> it's New Year's Eve, man. Got to New- be there for the countdown. And- well, you could, she could have come on here and count down yeah. with us. With us, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're still pussy whipped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> still, as always, right? <laughs> yep. Well, if mo- most men would probably have to agree that they are pussy whipped. I mean, if the, if the wife wants something, she gets it, right? You, because guys don't want to argue. Nope. Guys want yes, to avoid. Dear. Okay, dear. Right. Whatever you say, right? dear. It, 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 you'll admit you're wrong. You'll do anything to avoid conflict. And and women know this about guys, and they take advantage of that. They do. Yeah, they do. Take it from uh, our good friend I mean, there, Charlie, who I'm sure <laughs> he's he's. He sounds like he's been. I'm married. waiting for one to hit him in the side of the head. <laughs> <laughs> Told you to give me a beer, woman. <clears throat> right now. Oh my god. <laughs> where are where are you or where are you now, Kevin? You're not usually in that location. Is that your house? No, I'm, too? I'm up in Oregon dropping off my daughter at school. Oh boy. Oh, you've been traveling all over the place. And yeah, well his daughter yeah. has become a full time job for him, you know? Yeah. Hey Kevin, yeah, can I ask you a crazy. question? Your your mm-hmm. daughter's doing marching band in college, right? Yeah. Is she getting paid for it at all? Like through scholarships or anything? No, 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 no. No, no she got Seriously, scholarships from, huh? from academic scholarships, but, but nothing. I, I, I feel like the marching band should be getting scholarships to be out there doing it. I agree with you 100%. That and that's yeah. like my, my kid, I think he's on the path to be going to U of M, and he's doing marching band, and U of M's marching band instru- uh, drum major is actually from the same school my kid is going to. So, you know, I just, I feel like, you know, hey, have him go out there, be on your marching band. He's entertaining the crowd during your football games that are making all this money. So give him some money too to help out with his education. Well, if I'm not mistaken, nope. the, I agree. the players now they get scholarships, right? Oh yeah. Well, well they I'm, get money. They can go out and make money now. Yeah, now they can make money. They did. They couldn't do that in my yeah. day. Yeah, they get, they can do endorsements and yeah. things like that. Yeah, yep. but, but my question like is, my question is, I mean, you know, sure, the band probably should get some kind of scholarship credit or whatever. They make it sound like, oh, well, you're getting paid by you get free travel to away games that we go to and any type of extra games, you know, from what I was talking to one of my nieces, you know, she's going to be in the marching band for U of M. But she is, I think she is actually getting some kind of scholarship for being in the marching band, though. Oh, really? Yeah, they not you, Bo. They don't do that. I, I, I think don't it's know like, that they, she might be able to try and earn one somehow, but you know. I think it's only like two thousand dollars or something like that. But that's still it's yeah. two thousand dollars. It's not coming out of my pocket. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Oh, that's uh, that's something. That's that's a, they they treat it like athletics. I mean, they it, do give you credit for being yeah, athletic. Practice and do all that stuff on the side. Yeah. I was fighting for that in high school. Well, they, was, they weren't you know, paying. They finally they, recognized. In the high school, they finally recognized that this year at the high school she was at. But uh, they're actually uh, giving uh, them credit for athletics and uh, you know taking physical education. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, football players got or got scholarships or, or athletic players. I mean basketball players and so on. Yeah, they, they, uh, got, they scholarships. got scholarships, but they didn't get paid for it. You know. No. And let's face it. What are they doing when they're playing football? They're facing definite brain injury, yeah. okay? Well, and then you're not the getting any, you're not getting compensated for it. Come on. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I think Jason was starting to say it. More than anything, is they have jerseys, right? They have all this all this other merchandise that the schools are selling. You know, like Reggie yeah. Bush is the good example. You know, they're selling all his stuff, and he wasn't making a dime from anything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For years, many of the USC players would be suspended for taking. Yeah. cars and money from alumni yeah, right. and, and, and even uh, they had national championships taken away from them and uh, yeah. wow wow yeah well you know i mean i i think that they should get paid i i 
especially because, as you say, they make money off a of jersey with their name on it that they sell at a game, for instance. Yeah, these bigger schools, man, yeah. they make you know millions oh, off yeah. of football games. Yeah. And TV, right? TV rights. TV rights. Yeah. Yeah. Schools get paid. But what about the minor league. sports? You know, what about like water polo and things like that where yeah. they work just as hard? Yep. They don't make yep. money for the school, though. No. I see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. I don't think the water polo head coach gets paid what the football head coach does. No, no he doesn't. <laughs> wow. No. Oh, well. You know. I mean, they, they handed her, geez, I don't know, six, seven hundred dollars. You're right. Hold on a second. I got to do something here. Uh, I turned something on and nothing. I, I, I get all these, have all these problems. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on. Is this it? Uh, unmute site. Well, wait a minute. So why is that coming through? Is, is it okay now? I guess, I guess it is. Uh, I haven't heard nothing. Uh, I've never heard anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, but there was a, uh, some audio coming through here and I was trying to kill it and uh, I'm just w wondering if it's going to come back again and it must that, have been music uh, and zoom filtered it out <laughs> yeah something like that okay I'm okay all right I thought that I heard two people talking over each other let me see here oh here comes Alan okay Boy, we got a lot of people tonight. This is uh, amazing. So, I was going to ask. I was surprised not to see him. I was be like, you know, I'm a week or two behind. Did something happen? Yeah. <laughs> Alan's not here. So, uh, uh, Josh, what do you think is going to happen in the Supreme Court with this whole uh, thing now? Since the Supreme Court has said they're going to take um, uh, 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 Trump's appeal. <coughs> yeah. Incredibly hard to say. Yeah. I mean, don't, uh, you know, I, I think a, a lot of it will depend on the specific, you know, nature of the or scope of what they look at or, you know, what they agree to look at, for example. So, you know, I don't know. I'd really kind of have to dig into it because it's sort States of. States control the elections, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the thing about him. Not being able to get on the uh, well, it's specifically this case is what the Colorado case. Uh, I believe that was the one that I saw the headline that it was accepted. Uh, yeah, you know the appeal would be accepted. So, trying to think on the Colorado because there were a few of these, you know, the Colorado case. Because that's already meant to the Supreme Court, so there's no other court to be able to appeal to, right? Because then the other states was the, what was the other state? It was just the Secretary of State that yeah, that them off. And so now they, they have to go through the whole entire court process <laughs> instead of, you know, but Colorado's already at the Supreme Court, so where else is it going to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I said, I, I think, you know, that's going to be the tough point right there is states' rights. Or, you know, the states control the elections and stuff, you know, and that's where it wasn't... Was it Jimmy Carter who did uh, um, watch the polls in other countries and stuff, but said that they wouldn't do it in the United States because there's too many different rules for every different state? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, 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 could it come down to states' rights uh, here, Josh? I mean, after all, doesn't Colorado have the right as a state to say he can't run in their state? Well... I mean, no. I don't know that it will really be a state's rights argument. Oh, yeah. um, it'll probably be more uh, uh, because, I mean, a state's rights argument is very broad. And I think that the way that you usually win with the court and the court's preferences is to normally look at the most narrow question that they can. So I think the question will probably revolve around interpretation of the language within the amendment that says, you know, the sentence about uh, someone engaged in an insurrection, et cetera, et cetera, being ineligible. And, you know, 
five people will tell you, well, that's really clear. And then the next five people will tell you, no, that's not very clear. It's just, um, it's just as unclear to those uh, people that it's clear to. In other words, both uh, sides honestly believe that they're right, you know, I think. So it isn't as simple as yes or no. Um, so the adjudication of it is going to be fairly complex so that's why i'm saying they typically will narrow it down to the smallest amount of questions possible typically i mean they obviously mm -hmm. they can do whatever they want but i'm just saying typically so i think that it'll it'll focus more on an interpretation of the clause within the amendment and what constitutes insurrection and who has the power to make that decision uh within states. okay well it supposedly this was only used one time against one person and i think that was jefferson davis wasn't it no, well, it might be correct i don't remember honestly i um, think there's five people it's been five confused. people there were five people yeah. Okay. Yeah, there were several congressmen that were kicked out of congress yeah. It might have been more. I mean, but, there were certainly, but none of them had, to, none of them had to go to court and be proven guilty of anything for that to no, apply. That's correct. Right. See, I guess that's where I would disagree. Where you know, me personally, I would say yes for the way that that's set up right now is states' rights, and it really should not be. But and the same aspect too is, you know, if they want to base it on the Fourteenth Amendment with uh, insurrection and all that, I hate Trump. But he has never actually been found guilty yet. Yes, but neither, neither was of Jefferson the, so Davis. neither was Jefferson Davis. He was never prosecuted. He was never convicted. But he was denied. He was denied so the, the right to run for president. I, I would I would say that he should have had the right to be able to be convicted through the court. You know, and then that's once he's what, convicted through the court, the then one hundred percent. Yeah, but it doesn't you see, say that you though. You see, the thing is, this is a constitutional amendment. This is, and so it becomes law. But it says if you have done if you have done this certain thing you cannot run. So they have to they actually have to be convicted. Well, well, see, I guess that's where I would kind of disagree. Well, I, I would, but you, something it, like well, that, you have to back, actually be let, convicted and say you're guilty of this, and then yes, now you cannot run. Let's go back to our uh, Supreme no. Court expert, uh, Josh. Mm -hmm. Josh, do you, how does that sit with you? I mean, do you think that uh, that that because originally all these five other people weren't able to run for office, but they also weren't found guilty in a court of law. But did they have to be because there was an amendment of this nature? Well, I don't, personally, I don't think that you have to have been convicted. I mean, I, I, I don't know how some justices will feel about that. I, I don't think that you have to have been. Now, it doesn't mean that I don't think in this particular case it would be extremely helpful <laughs> if there were a conviction. I mean, I, I think that if there were a conviction attached, that in this probably, I mean, I'm sure the court would wish for it very much so, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that to happen before that date so that they could then say, you know, there was a conviction here in a federal court, by the way, not a state court. I think that it would be tremendously helpful, but I don't know that it's necessary personally. And I think you can make the argument constitutionally that it's not necessary and that if it were absolutely necessary, I think that you could make a decent argument that the people who wrote the amendment were very aware of the fact that these trials were probably not going to happen, mm -hmm. that by the wishes of Lincoln and, and, and others, that we sort of just dispensed with that affair, and we didn't drag the nation through, you know, one trial after another, and that the amendment in its spirit was meant basically to, to take care of, that was their punishment. That was sort of Lincoln's thinking, too. Now, he didn't write them, but I'm, I'm just saying... You know, in, in his spirit, I think that they said what he wanted to do was say, OK, the war is over. Welcome back to the United States of America. You can serve in some government, you know, but but we're going to there's some punitive 
punishments here, right? There are certain things that you just can't do anymore. So, you know, I mean, it would have been I mean, an interesting I, 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 haven't read, I haven't read the amendment, but does it apply to all um, uh, uh, publicly? See, that's going to be a toughie, too, because publicly. it does. Officers. It's officers of the government. It officers that's of the government. It but it does, government. it does spell out some other seats, too, though, so they might try to sit there and say, hey, these were specific, but then the last one word is that or or any other office. Yes, it's ge it's specific and then general. Like I mean, a, I, a I saw, you know, one argument that the Trump legal team, I believe, in one of the briefs is making the argument or is going to or did or something that, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we can see all that, but that doesn't apply to the president. They keep coming back to this, oh, but it doesn't apply to the president. And it's just like uh, that doesn't make sense. I hope that's the argument they make. Honestly, Somebody that's, said that's an absolutely <laughs> stupid argument. Right. That's what. I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, hopefully, by all that's means, what they say with I everything. Write, write they that. think he's immune of everything. It's I a mean, stupid I, I argument. Mean, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I might write that brief for him if they're. I mean, I'll do it for free. But, but it, it seems like almost yeah. a common sense <laughs> argument too, though, because if it spells out senators and congressmen, yeah. but you didn't say president, so no. But it says all other. Yeah. I read it. I've read it many times. It says it's it names specifics, and then it says or any other off elected yeah. officer or something or like that. An officer of the United States or as a member. Well, of now the, the question or... the question would then be who who was guilty of this? For instance, yeah. if you were Jefferson Davis, obviously that's probably who it was written to apply to. You know, uh, but let's say you mm -hmm. were just a soldier in the Confederate Army. Mm -hmm. Were you part of the insurrection? Well, you yeah. obviously were. You know, um, that's what I'm saying. There's the complications here. I mean, you obviously were, but, you know, it was just sort of, I mean, it wasn't well defined. I mean, you know, again, I mean, we, we have another issue that is unfortunately has a decent amount of amb ambiguity there. I mean, you know, I mean, it's ambiguous. I mean, again, I mean, some people can get worked up because they don't like Trump or they love this other person. Oh, it's not, it's not, it's clear as day. Well, I mean, it's like I said, but go ask five other people. And I'm not saying I don't agree with you. I'm just saying mm -hmm. they see it differently and, you know, they have a genuine a belief there and they have some valid points you know mm -hmm. so it, it's obviously it's not as easy uh, vernon as vernon has his hand up. all the time i disagree with the uh, assumption that section three of the 14th amendment is ambiguous it is spelled out yeah. that if you take the oath of office of any office to support the constitution of the united states and then you engage in an insurrection or rebellion against the same or give aid and comfort to the enemies thereof you cannot hold office yeah but the problem with that is at the time that there were people who fall under many people who fall into that category who mm -hmm. served in the confederate government or the confederate army who after the war came back to hold federal office not the presidency of the united states but there were members of the confederate government or the confederate army who served in high offices of government state and national after the war side by side with the people who wrote the amendment and none of them threw their hand up and said that guy can't be here congress can can vote by two-thirds of each house to remove such disability so they the question would be vote. and so they, the question would yeah. be to these didn't. people who served did they get that exemption from the Congress? Yeah. I'm not aware of any. Okay, let me, let me, let me. I'm just saying they were welcomed back. And I'm not saying it was with open arms. There was no parade or anything. I'm just saying, I'm just giving you the, the, the historical data. Whether or not I would want those people there is besides the point. I'm just trying to provide the, you know, the data, if you will. There were people that led armies in the field and five years later, we're serving in high office of government. And the people who wrote the amendment that we're, you're saying or other people are saying, not saying I even you know, disagree completely, wrote, were st standing there when they did it. And well, like I said, they didn't throw a fit. 
I mean, they just kind of look the other way. Yeah. So you're saying that establishes the precedent. Well, I mean, it happened. You know, I mean. It, it, well, here, here, here's a couple of questions I, I would ask. I, I, you know, I, more than anyone else, would hope that, you know, Donald Trump couldn't run for president, wouldn't be allowed sure. to run for president, and, uh, you know. But, ne but nevertheless, uh, he is going to be running for president. There's no question about that. Yeah. Unless something happen, happens between now and then, uh, he's going to be the nominee of the Republican Party. Uh, do we really care about two states saying he's got to be taken off the ballot? He can't run in those states? Because oh, those there's states. More than that. There's more than two. <laughs> Illinois voted yesterday to take him off the ballot. Oh, the, leg really? the, leg the legislature in Illinois. Well, the the problem oh. is, I mean, I, I agree with you, but I'm just saying I, I think the problem is that it does need to be settled because I think if not, what will happen is, is you know, you will say, you will have people saying, well, Biden has to come off the ballot, and everyone here will say, oh, he didn't commit any, oh, yeah, he commits insurrection against the government every day, he won't, he won't do anything about the southern border. Just look at the southern he, border. He, he, He's derelict yeah, yeah. of his duty in the southern border, and he's an insurrectionist, and he can't run. And yeah, but that has nothing to do with upholding the Constitution of the United States. I completely agree, States. but they'll make that argument, <laughs> yeah. and there'll be a hell of a lot of people in this country that'll shake well, all I'm all I'm saying is, you know, do, we, do, we, people, do we really care Correct. that he can't run in these states? I mean— uh, No, it doesn't say—the the amendment doesn't say they can't run. What the amendment says is you cannot hold off it. So yes, even sir. if you get yeah. elected, you can run for office and you can get elected in those states, but you can't hold the office if you win. Right. Hold what office? Presidency? Whatever yeah. office you're running for. So what happens? What happens in, in Colorado? Do they then turn their close their eyes and say he's not president right now? Well, oh, yeah, that argument know, is saying no. that he should be able to run. All no, I'm all I'm, I'm saying, Colorado all I'm saying, saying. I, I agree with Josh to the extent that I feel a little uncomfortable with not allowing him to, to run in these states. Uh, because uh, I'm, it, to begin with, those are states which didn't vote for him anyway. Yeah, it's just gonna be more fuel to the fire of the people who say it's a stolen election too. And that right. too, that too. You know? I don't think the Supreme Court should get any politics into it, though. If they do, there's going to be a That's rebellion. Why oh. well, they are lifetime appointments is so they be above politics. Well, well, they're not going to be above politics, are they? Because this oh. is the guy that gave them their job. Yeah, you know Honestly, how that. I don't, I, That's been I mean, going on. Personally, I don't know that that'll really be a critical factor because the job is now the job. I mean, they could. He can't do anything about it. I mean, if they if they uh, uh, if they make a ruling not in his favor or five rulings not in his favor and he gets reelected and he gets back in, what what can he do? <laughs> well, if he <laughs> throws the Constitution out, he can do whatever he wants. You know, I mean, you know, he, but I mean, he can't. Trump thinks he can arrest can't fire them. those folks. <laughs> you know, so I mean, you know, they're exempt from that move. I, I mean, you know. What this will come down to a lot of is they'll get to have their day arguing over, you know, their plain reading and their textualism and their strict constructionist. And I mean, these are the, the ways that a lot of these folks really dig into what was meant, which is where I'm saying there are certain justices that the way they interpret things are going to have some issues when they say, listen, the people who wrote this amendment 10 years after they wrote this amendment sat right next to a person who 10 years before that wore a confederate uniform and, and rode on a horse and said, charge, you know, and they didn't lose their mind. So why are we losing our mind today? I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying they're going to ask the question. And the question is at least pertinent. Now I'm willing to hear well, all the, the, the argument the about it being pertinent. I'm just saying it's yeah. a pertinent question. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. but the question here is: is that how many of those uh, people, <laughs> when this was originally written, what was it written for? It was written for for people who were in the 
uh, in the, uh, the what do you call it, the Civil War. Yeah. You know, they were insurrectionists. Uh, does it was it written for today? You know. But you know, one thing I can say, Alex, is even back then when it was written, a Confederate flag was never rolled through the Capitol. Right. Yeah. I mean, you it know, was so. written for all time, you know, but yeah. it, it, it as well as the rest of the Constitution. But yeah. that that by its nature means, though, that it is difficult sometimes to apply it practically to a world that is drastically different than that one. You can say the same thing that about the Second done. Amendment. I'm just saying I say Second part. Amendment. Yeah. <laughs> at that time, you could only shoot one bullet at a time. I think that's the way right. you should go back to. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's just, you know, look, I again, I, I mean, I don't want to see a Trump <laughs> presidency. I'm not even saying I'm not for the. the I mean, there, I, honestly, there's some pretty decent arguments to be made for this. So I'm don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it's in. I'm not in favor of it. Okay. I'm hoping if something comes yeah. out of it, it's maybe universal voting rights, and it's one rule across the country, and everybody so is on the same page. You know, don't even want to take the wrong impression that I'm trying to make. I'm, I'm I actually slowly have well, been looking well, into well, some pretty strong argument that I think you know there are a lot in the right here, and maybe kind of working that way. But I'm just saying, any person academically or whatever who's going to make such an argument has to be able to sit down and ask themselves what is going to be every counter argument to this and I need an answer for it right so I'm just trying to search for those you know questions you you, you know you can't disprove my theory and here's why I've got all the evidence you know I mean but some of them are going to be really tough is, is all I'm getting at you know that's all yeah yeah uh, now here is the other question is not uh, Trump putting himself, painting himself into a corner. If the Supreme Court rules that it's okay for a state to say you can't run because they deem that you were an insurrectionist, okay, doesn't that then apply to every state in the country and he won't be able to run in any of them? Well, no. the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court sides with Colorado, yes. Right. Yeah, that's what that if they mean. decide with Colorado, so that means that every, no state can run him. On no, their... that would mean that every state could make up their own mind if they want oh, to have okay. him on their ballot All or right. not. I would say, but Charlie's going to lose a digit if he has his hand up any longer. Oh, oh, oh! I, I, yeah, well, his toes are gone already, so <laughs> a few fingers wouldn't make it much of a difference. Yes, uh, Charlie, I'm sorry, you were over on the uh, side yeah. and I didn't see you. The way I look at it is if you have a bank guard who has sworn to sur to protect the bank and against bank robbers and he ends up joining a gang to rob the bank, does he get to them come back to his bank job as a bank guard? <laughs> the next week. Is that what you want? He's already signed up with these robbers to rob the bank. That failed. So he's going to then come back to want to come back to for his job as a bank guard. I'm trying to think if that's a good argument, Charlie. Uh, well, that's because, basically what because, happened. He's the and, president. Well, no, because you're applying it to another situation and a hypothetical one at that. You know, here, yeah, we're, here, here, here we're not talking about hypotheticals. Here we're talking about. The bank takes a, an oath to, to guard the bank. Mm -hmm. He breaks that oath by trying to rob the bank. You're going to let him come back to. And expect them to obey an oath to guard the bank again, which is what we'd be doing if we let well, Trump. Well, to, to run, begin with, to begin with, in the bank, I'm sure he didn't take an oath. Okay. I don't know. When when I worked for a bank as a teller, I had to take an oath. Did you have to take an oath? Really? Hell yes. What do you mean? You had to raise your hand and everything, and yeah, I had to. I had to agree to not abscond with funds. I mean. I, no, but I mean, did you have to swear an oath? Did you have to? Dollars in cash well, but, but not stealing money from the bank is a given, <laughs> okay? You know. Not trying to overthrow the American not government trying, should be a good thing too. You well, uphold the Constitution. That's a given that you shouldn't be trying to overthrow it. And then him being the organizer of that speech on you know uh, January sixth, you know, with Rudy Giuliani coming out there is specifically saying trial by combat. 
Yeah. That you yeah, just that, threw it out the something... way. You were an insurrectionist right then and there. Trump organized all the things were the speakers that he chose to be out there to be speaking to start instigating what happened. <laughs> Trial by combat. It, it's done. It's over with. But I would like to see it go through a court system and him to be convicted. Yeah. Because that's the American way. Well, we're going through the court system now. But and then that's my argument with myself, too, is I don't think Colorado should be able to do what they did because he has not been convicted. But because it was a court that said that, are they actually convicting him? And uh, was it called when they're not there at the trial? In um, absentia. Yes. Are they convicting him in absentia by saying he can't be on the ballot? Well, so maybe court, actually... courts are allowed to make uh, to make a ruling on a case yeah. without mm -hmm. having a trial. In the case of uh, Trump in New York, the judge has already said he's guilty because he didn't go for a, he went for a, a trial by judge. And so mm -hmm. the judge made a fair, what's it called? It's a certain summary kind of judgment, summary judgment. Summary judgment yeah. And that uh, you could consider what went on in, in uh, Colorado's uh, summary judgment, that the highest court in that state uh, dictated that he had committed a crime, you know. No, yeah, what, the, what the Colorado that, you... Supreme Court said that the 14th Amendment says that he cannot hold office. Therefore, we're going to leave him off the ballot because it's yeah. pointless to allow him to run in our state if he cannot hold the office. Does that say if you engage or aid and abet? Or aid and, and abet. He definitely okay. aided okay. and abetted. Yeah. I, I would not want to be on the Supreme Court right now and have to figure this one out. You know, I mean, it's an easy thing. Is it all the Republicans want? Well, you know, no, it's not. It's not easy <laughs> stuff. I mean, but, but I also think that, that you know, what we have made up our minds about, or most people have, or have a conversation about for forty-five minutes, or whatever. That's not how it's going to go there. I mean, you know, I th think what's going to happen is. If you wanted to solve a constitutional question that really hasn't been tested, and you you, you want to get to the bottom of it, I mean, what what these folks are going to do and their clerks is, you know, they're going to go back and they're going to you know start with the statute, the the amendment, and that's fine. But they're going to go to the debates that took place when the amendment uh, was debated. They're going to look at the the journals and the records from the house and the senate and the state legislatures that argued over all that they're gonna look at the op-eds that were published in newspapers at the time by various people i mean this is what i would be doing if i wanted to know for sure as a historian mm -hmm. they're gonna try to find out if there are personal letters and journals of people who were prominent leaders of the time or who wrote the amendment except or you know etc who led it? I mean, you know, the, I mean, you know, the Federalist Papers, for example, don't apply here. Well, maybe, but I'm just saying they get quoted all the time in Supreme Court decisions, right? You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, they're mm -hmm. going to hearken back to things that they can look for as evidence to try to understand what people were thinking at, at that time. What was their intention? What what was their purpose? You know, what did they have to say? Did anyone say anything about if you pass this or if you don't pass this, one day someone will do something and this, that, and the other will happen and then read that and say, wow, that sounds a lot like what happened with Trump. And here's what they had to say about it. You know, I mean, you might find that. I mean, I can guarantee you that the American Historical Association, the Organization of American Historians, you know, the Society for Historians of the Early Republic, they will all submit friends of the court briefs. I mean, I know they will because they'll send me a copy. You know, I mean, they will all send a 50 or 60 page document to the court directly. And and all three of them will probably be contracted by lawyers for both sides to write them academic, you know, not really, you know, papers make, you know, they'll pay people to figure this stuff, help them figure this stuff out. So, I mean, it'll be a, 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 a deep, question i mean i you know I, I mean i i honestly believe that i mean every historical record and account that we have from people inside the court say that 
that is stuff that they look for, you know, that, that they go around and around and back and forth of that kind of thing. So, I mean, as you said, it, I wouldn't necessarily want to have to do it either. Cause it's a hell of a lot of, yep. Yep. You know, yep. And, and you're right. guaranteed not to make a lot of people happy. Well, watch <laughs> this now. Watch this now, folks. So what do you think, Alan? Oh, I was just going to say he hasn't said nothing yet tonight. Oh, he's gone. Kevin, he? And Kevin, too. It's I have a Donald, question. If I can. Trump Trump Joe. You have a question? I do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Uh, so would, would it be, I don't know what the word is, legal. I guess maybe that's not the word. Would, but would, would it be copacetic for the court to say something like, we are not going to allow this on a state by state level because of the turmoil it would cause in the country if half this a, a, a large number of states yeah. kicked him off of the ballot. Well, uh, let me would that let, be yeah, but okay. let me give you give you another little argument here, and it's one I always come up with. Oh. But okay. the question is, this is uh, referring to the current uh, the primaries coming up in those states and whether he can be on the ballot in the primaries in those states and the question is show me somewhere in the constitution that dictates that we should have primaries well, we don't okay well that's a good argument too i guess yeah yeah because it, it yeah I mean, I, I mean, don't think primaries state, I, aren't even designated in the Constitution. I don't think the state should be allowed to have primaries as part of the constitutional process. And what am I going to do in March? Boy, this is complicated. <laughs> well, this is complicated. Go out and get drunk. What? <laughs> you know, I mean, March Madness. Well, uh, St. Patty's. I mean, there are a lot basketball. of basketball. Because again, I just got called well, to commit. You know, the system of <laughs> electing. Uh, the president specifically, but a lot of other offices has evolved a great deal and is vastly different now than it was at the time this amendment, for example, yeah. was, you know, written in the ink, right? So, you know, that's what I'm saying is those questions will be asked. And look, not everything has a clear Well, also, also, also you're... You're, you're, you're saying, what we're saying here is that the amendment says that they can't hold public office, governmental Not office, runs. okay? But it didn't mm -hmm. say they couldn't run. And they couldn't be on the ballot. They just said they I mean, couldn't you, take office. If you want to get really down and nitpicky about the language? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm bringing this up because these are all questions that are going to be asked, I would imagine. Yeah, I'd say that's what the court is going to be doing is being nitpicky about every sentence or you know letter in that argument yeah but they won't let a 25 year old run for president but because that's specifically spelled out well just specifically spelled out about the insurrection too but he hasn't been convicted they won't even let 25 year old have to be convicted what you're saying but your argument they should be able to run so what if they can't serve they should be able to run they should be on the ballot you have to be convicted of being 25 <laughs> See, I mean, let's face it, the real, original intention of this uh, this uh, amendment, which obviously became part of the Constitution, but the reason for it was is that they really wanted to have sanctions against those people who, in, 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 you know, got the war going and, and were, were heading up the war and to make sure those people could never take office. But uh, if, if you really look at it, if you don't think that we were actually at war when Trump was in office, look at all the videos of all the people no, out I mean, on the streets you, you, and rioting you, you, and stuff. You, we were at war. You can say he caused that. a war. You can say he that. caused a civil war. That's what the civil war looks like nowadays. But you know, how did he? How did he instigate the whole situation? I mean, I would say Giuliani did more to instigate it than he did. I agree. Who did you, gave did you, Giuliani did, the? Did, who, who gave him the you microphone? Know, and we said that a few minutes. We said that a few minutes ago about the language he used. Did he not say, "Let's we'll go down to yeah. the capital"? And, and I will be, I will be you. there with you. I will. And he be said, there. "You have to fight like I hell." Will be, I will go with you. 
Yeah. And then, you have to and fight then like all hell. his boys, all his boys told him to turn the car around and go the other way. Yeah, the only reason they did, he wasn't at the Capitol is because the Secret Service physically restrained him from going. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, he said he was going to go there because I was driving up 101 North and I almost put my truck in the ditch when he said it. Yeah. And I remember that. My question is this. Distinctly. Let's say he could have gotten up to the Capitol. Do you think he would have gotten out of the limo? Yes. You do? If they yeah. Let him. yeah. Sure he would have. Do you think? I think he would have freaking walked right into the Capitol, into the rotunda, and everything, and did yeah. everything that all the other people were doing because he would have been by him, the people around you're him. You're giving him credit for too yeah. much guts. Maybe in the sunroof. Maybe he'd be out the sunroof. No, I don't think. I don't think he would have. <laughs> would have been a problem for him because all those people were backing him. Yeah. They would have yeah. surrounded yeah. him. And, yeah. and, and I thought it was all Antifa and there. Stick, <laughs> stick your head out of the sunroof and wave hello to everybody. He would have been walked down the freaking steps. You know where where they do the, the yeah. yearly thing where. The president has entered. It would have yeah, just yeah, been yeah. that was that uh, shaman or whatever they call. That's it. probably yeah, what he was hoping the, for. The QAnon shaman yeah. would have been entering him down yeah. there, taking his Mussolini pros and everything. Yeah. That's yeah. probably what yeah. he was imagining. I don't know. I don't. I, I thought. I, I I thought he was going down there. And he was hoping that Pence was going to do the thing he wanted him to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vernon. And it's point. almost better if he did do that. Uh, uh, then we know he would have done that. Right. Two points. Two Ver points. Vernon, one, yeah. One is that let's not lose sight of the fact that in order for an amendment to be part of the Constitution, it has to be passed by both parties of Congress by two-thirds vote and ratified by three-fourths of the states. the states. That's point one. Point two, Trump may have wanted to go down to the Capitol, but in our country being a country of law the president has no business going to the capitol unless he's invited, he's invited. Right, that's right right that's true that's true but Trump right. didn't care about that well he didn't do it okay so we we can't argue yeah that, you know the yes uh, first right. of all who had their hand up first uh alan. So i haven't heard alan's alan, voice yeah. alan did and then yeah, Ray. So i i just wanted to, I, i'm sorry just a lot of stuff going on here <laughs> i just wanted to say that i fully agree with what charlie said that it's that it's in the constitution and it does not say you have to be convicted yeah, so, yeah. it doesn't you know, and, and and so but it also doesn't say you can't run i think that was deliberate yeah they deliberately and it may have been deliberate ray what it says i i did, uh president. the other thing the, the way Trump always gets an out and it's a total it's a very much of a mafia boss move is he only gives little kernels of of information let's go down there and fight like hell things that can be interpreted in many ways and then he mm -hmm. has people like Giuliani and his other henchmen really spell it out but he never does it himself that way he has always has a little out you know but when you're the yes, leader he's that smart just like a true uh, I think he is. A true mobster yeah. does that too. Oh, I didn't put the yeah. hit on that guy. I think he does it. I think something he's learned to do. He he hung out around those people. He learned from those people. Yeah, what a lot. You know, they they came. And Giuliani, I think, came up with it, the RICO Act, and it said that the hot the the top mobster, the the boss, if anybody in his organization below him commits a crime he's guilty of the crime that's right that's why they they're using the rico act over there yeah. in what state is that yeah, georgia. Absolutely. Yeah, georgia. 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 georgia federally too yeah well they're not no it's one's a, used the rico it's act a federally federal law. it's a federal law i'm just saying they haven't well well georgia has their own rico acts uh laws that are stronger than the federal i don't know we'll see laws. that's why she was able to do it um, they could do it in federal court too but they just didn't so, yeah. Well, hmm. it's a it's a big step because it was made for it is organized big, crime. And it, well, what do you call Trump? Organized crime. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I I agree. But, right. Yeah. Uh, I might. Your I, neck I, brace? I might agree. I with, took it off. <laughs> oh, Father Ray I, isn't with us tonight. I huh? defrocked myself. <clears throat> okay. Well, you can go frock yourself. So far as I'm concerned. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. Tried to, but my wrist hurts. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, Josh had a good point, though. I'm not going to re rehash what he said, but 
he had a good point with you know what he was saying so who josh Josh. yeah oh yeah it's complicated it's it when you really like what Josh, all those things that Josh mentioned, it gets extremely complicated. Well, you know, they could have refused to take the case. Oh, they man. Didn't. They didn't have they, much of a choice. They kind of did that first, didn't they? Uh, um, I'm trying to remember. No. Because Trump was asking them not to. Not to take for, the, for the, uh, what was it, the Colorado oh. one? or No, I think it was the Colorado no, one. I, he was what's asking his name? Them not to. Uh, the uh, guy who was uh, uh, running the case against him in Washington. What's his Jack name? Smith. Jack, Jack Smith. Smith. Uh, he um, has asked the Supreme Court for a ruling on whether Trump can be put on trial for this, to just get that out of the way, you know, so that he, Trump doesn't have that argument going for himself. So, uh, it, 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 yes, Jeff. I, I think, you know, we can discuss... And, and look at all the versions, you really still ultimately have eight judges who have to make that decision mm. for themselves. Plus and four. We don't have any sense. Nine judges. Nine. nine eight. Yeah, nine. the eight. Nine. Nine. I know we have nine, but I'm talking about the eight Republicans. Or oh, six. Six. Well, six. Six Republicans. Yeah. Um, so anyway... I don't know what they're going to do. For all they know, for all we know, couldn't they do this, Josh? Couldn't they just say we're not going to take the case, or we decided we're not going to make a judgment on this? We'll let the the yeah. uh, we'll let what went on in Colorado stand, and we're not we're not going to enter into this. Can they do that? Well, I don't. I mean, they've decided that they'll hear it, so they're yeah. pretty locked in now. It would be. I don't know that they've ever said they were going to take a case and then change their mind. Yeah. Um, so they've said they're going to hear it, so they'll hear it, and then they'll, you know, stick a judgment out there. And Can't they still kick it back to the appellate court, though, even though they heard the case? Well, I mean, there's possibilities dependent on the arguments, et cetera. I mean, they, they have the power. I mean, their judgment can be whatever they want it to be uh, if they have agreement on it. And, I mean, they can... They can say, you know, they can revert it back to the Court of Appeals or whatever and then say that if the Court of Appeals still says this, then that's that. You know, I mean, they can sort of do it that way. But honestly, I mean, I think if it's gotten to them and the question is out there in multiple states, which it is, it'll just come back through another. You know, I I mean, personally, I think they'll just settle it because that's. Because they because it needs done. I because mean, they'll make a they'll make a ruling on it then. You I, I, yeah, I think they will. Well, I mean, I mean but, that's but, their job. It, you, know. you know, they're they've been so so much they have been uh, uh, been accused of various things in recent weeks and months and this year last mm-hmm. year uh, that they do they want to get themselves into a place where they're going to lose <laughs> even more faith of the American public. Yeah. Clarence uh, Thomas ought to recuse himself. Uh, His wife was a big part of the. Right. Yeah, she was That's texting right. the people in the White House the day it was happening. And, yeah. You know, I would say too that, you know, I don't really know that it. You know, it could it could change the things too. I would remember that you know the Fourteenth Amendment, also, and and this language in here one was partially even though it doesn't say that in here, was partially set up as a roadblock to help ensure that it was not easy for the former Confederacy, for the South, to easily put people back in Congress that could try to do things to work around or you know do away with the 13th Amendment, okay, which did away with slavery. So it was somewhat of a protection for that. And it would be important to remember that when they passed it in 1866 and when it was finally ratified in 1868 by enough states to become an amendment, it was done by three quarters of the states, uh, and we'd have to get we'd dig into this a little deeper, but three quarters of the states necessary who had rejoined the Union fully at that time. Mm-hmm. And not all of them had. So it, it was, you know... Um, 
you know, I, I don't think Georgia came back till like 1870. And that, that doesn't mean they weren't part of the Union again, but in a way they still weren't. They still weren't sending full delegations to Congress and things like that because they they slow rolled their way back into the well, did Was this law, um, let me ask you, was this amendment passed without the ratification by those states that were involved in the Civil War? Yeah, I can't speak for every single state, but yes, basically. I mean, that's the way the 13th Amendment was stuck through. So it you could say that through. that law was, uh, 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 that amendment uh, was uh, um, not uh, not uh, fairly no, those, applied. Those, those states voluntarily removed themselves. No, yeah, they did, correct. but I'm yeah, saying I'm that right. it, uh, but what you had was the states who were voting on this mm -hmm. were states that were part of the uh, part of the, the union United as states. opposed the union as opposed to the uh, to the yeah, confederacy it, it, it was it was pretty similar to the passage of the 13th amendment which happened without the ratification from georgia okay. and south carolina and then because at the time that it was done they weren't by their own admission and by their own desire they, they were succeeded. not part of the united states mm -hmm. and then when the war was over and it came time to come back we said, oh, so by could the way, this Supreme Court come back while, and while say while you were away, we moved the furniture around. Could could <laughs> this court come back and say that that amendment was uh, made? Um, uh, that amendment was was made by a bunch of states which were sympathetic towards it. OK, I, I don't think they will do that. And I, I mean, I don't think that they believe that that's a constitutional argument. I, I'm just saying that. It's part of the equation. Like, let that, me ask you this: Look, when you know, they when they made this amendment, did they, they had to get two thirds of the states to agree? Three, right, three, uh, three quarters. Three quarters. Three, yeah. three, is three, it three quarters? Three yeah, quarters. Two, -thirds, it's two thirds of the houses of Congress and three quarters of the states. Uh, okay, three quarters of the states. But was that three quarters of the states that were part of the union, or three quarters of this, all the states? Part of the union. Of the states hey, that Illinois were, didn't get to vote for the Second Amendment, so it doesn't count. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> it was three quarters of the states that were part of the union at that time. At the time, yeah. You know, it's, now it's, readmission to the union came with the price of when you come back in, you're accepting the Constitution as it now is. Yeah. As I said, while you were away, we moved the furniture around. And when you move back in the house, you can't move any of it. Okay, you know, it is where we want it, and that's where it's going to stay. Again, mm -hmm. I'm not making an argument that that changes anything. You, you, you I'm can't just apply. making a point that it is part of the equation. Quickly, you can't apply, can you, to this case, that this is an, uh, that when, it, when the law was passed, when the amendment was added, uh, it was a certain way, now it's archaic. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you really, can't you can't say that about a constitutional amendment, can you? Right. No, no, because it's it's an because there are a lot of them are all archaic. It, I mean, the I second, amendment, the second is amendment is archaic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, no, it, it's law. I mean, the, the 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 avenue for that is then change it. Or, yeah, have another you amendment. Know, you know. Well, yeah, right. You know. So I mean, there's an avenue to 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 go down. Mm -hmm. for that problem you know so that that's the, the argument there. and that happens to be the one that i agree with by the way but yeah like i said i'm not making the argument that that helps trump or hurts trump i'm just saying if you if you wanted me to give you a 100 percent, this is why i think these are my arguments footnotes the whole deal it's not going to happen in an hour right know? exactly yeah. exactly uh, hey i, I got I, I got the theme playing now uh, and look, we've been joined by Adrian. Hi, Adrian. How you doing? Oh, see, now she goes and hides. You know, you know, you know what she's like. What she's like, Brian. She's like a cat you have that every time you get on a Zoom call, walks right in front of the camera. You know. <laughs> anyway, Jeff, thank you so much for being here tonight. We appreciate it. Josh, always good to have you here. And of course, uh, uh, Jason, you should call more often, you know, <laughs> if your wife will let you. 
Yeah. Uh, Showing Charlie my lion shirt because the lions mm. won. Yeah. Oh, Charlie. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. <laughs> no, they did. He did not report. When, when oh, the refs, boy. when the refs got demoted, they won. Since when did I turn this into a sports show? Yeah. Anyway, when you thank you, won Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vernon. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Adrian. The hot babe. Babe. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kevin. And thanks to Ray and thanks to Alan. All of you give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a wave big wave a big wave goodbye at you. I can't even speak English tonight, so please. Uh, anyway, um, uh, let's listen. Uh, Amy Manuel is next over most of the same GabNet. She'll be here with the intersection. She'll be taking your calls at GabNet Live on Skype. I'll see you again on Monday uh, with the pop up show and then next Wednesday, right back here, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.